This is the Player 4 Podcast. Join us each week as we talk about video games, entertainment, and pop culture, and bring in guests from the Rooster Teeth community. Player 4 has entered the game. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Player 4 Podcast. I am Tristan, a.k.a. Chagra Zero, on the Rooster Teeth website. I am Alex, a.k.a. Chaos Black 21. I'm Malachi, a.k.a. Suki Kiba. And I'm Joseph, a.k.a. J. Dunlap. What's on the palette today, Alex? The palette today? <laughs> what's on the well, Are we talking on about... The palette, what's on the dossier today? Yeah. We're going to get a taste of side quests. I like it. Oh, and I the RTX one thing. because yeah. we did uh, we did we we have two different chat things for our list. First is the RTX reveal. Then it's the side quest. Then Andromeda. We're going. Joseph and I are going to add a few things from a few things I had said in 104. And then the Star Wars teaser to finish it off before we get the flip out of here. Flip it off. All right, so Alex, you are the man with the information. Tell us about the RTX reveal. I don't uh, think RTX is all that revealing. I think they'd get in trouble for that. So I'm pretty revealing. They yeah. revealed the first thing uh, for RTX, and that is going to be a concert during RTX by Phantogram. I think I've heard of the band. I haven't listened to any other stuff. Uh, that's going to take place on Saturday night around 8.30 is when the doors open. Uh, it's this place called Stubbs Waller Creek Amphitheater. Stubbs Waller Creek Amphitheater. Yes. Is this just a random band or did they actually have a presence in RTX or Rooster Teeth? Um, Do you know? I believe this is just a random event that okay. possibly the... Uh, Rooster Teeth was able to, I guess, I guess they talked to them and they were on board with having a concert during RTX. There's, there's nothing to get too deep in. I was just curious if they actually had a previous presence there. That's I've all never I've heard of them. Okay. No, this is the first time that they've been a part of RTX. And so people who bought tickets to RTX get, well, by the time this video comes out, it will already be past the stage where they get pre-sell tickets. After that, they'll be open to the general public. So it's not technically a RTX exclusive event, but it's apparently part of RTX Austin 2017. Interesting. So how it makes it part of it? Are they, are they performing at the RTX venue? No, no, they're not. They're at this Waller thing. So yeah. wait, how is it affiliated with RTX then, and not just coincident? Pretty much, our, it, the only reason it looks like it's affiliated with RTX is the fact that uh, <laughs> they're like, hey, we're going to give you this special live concert that you get first access to getting tickets to, but you don't have to actually go to RTX to go to it. Okay, so if you're going to RTX, you get first dibs on tickets to the show. But if you're not going to RTX, you can still buy tickets. Yes. For all those people flying to Austin and not going to RTX... <laughs> yes, exactly. You know, I mean, I mean is... you know, there are people who live in Austin who don't go to RTX. Yeah, and it is a big music place, uh, so I no, no, it's not. I, guess. <laughs> I assume those are going to get uh, sold out pretty quickly. Joseph, are you insinuating that an amphitheater has music, or uh, Joseph Alex? Uh, I'm not insinuating uh, anything. <laughs> I could have music <laughs> plays and musicals, which are plays with music, so... I don't... What? 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 I believe you. I need you to link me a Wikia page that proves this. Oh, I haven't been able to do my Wikia pages in the last few episodes. I haven't <laughs> had any to Wiki. <laughs> well, Wiki Amphitheater. Okay. So, moving y- yeah, moving on, on to side quests. Side is, quest. that, is that the next thing? Uh, <laughs> oh, I do want to point yep. out Mary said that on the RTX Twitter, she posted in the questions and answers forum on the RT site, that autographs, in case anyone wants to know uh, for RTX, they are going to announce more about those in May slash June. So I guess late May, early June. All right. Then. That's it. Now side quest. Yeah, so I'm a Specter. Yeah, we're we're a specter. Yeah. Yeah. Are they sold out yet? 
I have no idea. Here's what I do know. I really did not want to spend the money on the side quest badge in case I became a specter, because then I'd have to go through getting the refund and everything. So I applied to be a specter, hoping it wouldn't sell out. But also, you know, it's just like when you apply to be a guardian, you've been one for two straight years, you think in the back of your head, well, I mean, why would I have any reason to think that I won't be? But the nice thing about guardianship is that you know well ahead of the time that RTX tickets go on sale, if you're a guardian or not. Yes, that was one of the touch-and-go aspects of it, that the applications went out like a month after the, the badges went out. But I applied, and then I got an email Sunday or Monday saying that I was a Spectre and needed to do a reply with a resounding yes. So I did. If you reply in text form with a resounding yes, how many times do you have to write the word yes? I just said yes in all caps in like an exclamation point. Yeah, how many exclamation points would a resounding I'm, yes I'm be? I'm pretty sure it was just one because I try not to overstate things. I don't know. Uh, I would have used I would have used more like a baker's dozen. Well, That's I didn't want I didn't want to sound desperate. You know, it's like calling the next day. <laughs> Do you even know how many are in a baker's dozen, dude? Fourteen. Um, <laughs> By my count, forty-eight. Yeah. <laughs> so um, there is a, a special Twitter account that I need to follow. There was the first time I was a Spectre, and then they stopped using that one because Grady stepped down, and I think, like, his wife was running that because she was in, in charge of the Spectres. So this is a new one specific to this year. So there's that going on. Before we move on to the next thing, I wanted to tell you guys about an exciting thing I decided to do here at home. Ew. What exciting thing did you decide to do at home? So I, <laughs> 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 so I got a 12-foot long... <clears throat> HDMI cable. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was, like, ready to bleep this one out. <laughs> got my finger over the button here. Right. I, got a 12-foot long bleep. I plugged it. Yeah, I plugged it into the computer, and I'm going to, in two days' time, receive from Amazon a uh, projector that I'm going to use as, like, a, a nighttime monitor for Netflix or gaming and stuff. Yay! I have so long considered doing something like that, but I kind of wanted to own a place before I did it. Right, right, right. So you could mount it and all that. Right. Yeah. Or And when you're done with that, then you can actually use it. Right. When you're done mounting right. it. Right. Super fancy. <laughs> you get like a nice little motor. You're, just, you're super mature today. <laughs> <laughs> when are we ever not? I, so, Always? I don't know, the, it was just, um, the thought occurred to me because of the Star Wars role-playing game that I've been running, and a good friend that I've known since he was like nine is in the game, and he brings a projector each week. So if I need to show them a picture of a location in the Star Wars mythos, or if I want to show them a page from the rule book to copy down a, a talent or a feat, and then I just put it over on the, on the, quote, monitor that's being projected to the wall. Well, then yeah. I thought, you know, it'd be cool to kind of research and see if I could project something onto my white wall above my computer. And sure enough, once you go over the $50 mark, you get to things that are actually worth your money. Mm -hmm. Like, they go up to $15,000 if you're wanting 4K. Yes. Oh, yes. Well, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I was surprised that your, your, your number was as low as 50. Oh, you have a 4K TV? No, I have a 4K okay. wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 4K wall. <laughs> you, you can get up I've to got about as many pixels as there are greens in the paint and wood. I think it's about <laughs> 40 to 720. You can get in the 50 to 100 range, which is not bad. And if it's closer to the wall than than uh, than people think of when they think of projector, it's actually pretty decent. The one that I'm getting, I watched a video somebody <laughs> made. You heard wait, that too, Alex? Yeah. Wait, what? Did you it's really sport? Shorten it to Dees. Dees. Yes, I did. <laughs> he did that thing. Isn't that no, a thing? No, stop trying to make it a thing. It's like fetch. <laughs> no, it's not. It's a thing. <laughs> so, uh, Andromeda. Speaking of things that I'm going to um, use my projector for. <laughs> I'm going to project move to Andromeda. Onto my... Will you guys wall. stop talking in stereo? <laughs> um... I wanted to point out that I checked the Twitter for a side quest and their last update for tickets to 
side quest was six days ago, saying that they still have tickets. So I'm assuming they still have tickets because they haven't posted that they're sold out. You know, I haven't bought a ticket to side quest. Have you, Alex? I haven't. Uh, I'm still trying to decide if I actually want to go just to the charity auction or actually get a whole entire season pass or well weekend pass not a season pass. you know you want to hang out at buffalo billiards with us yeah i mean like that's the only thing i end up doing is the buffalo billiards thing because i'm guardianing for everything else or my guardianing takes me pretty much up to the time of it like i can remember last year i made it to the i made it to the uh, charity auction to like the last 20 minutes of it after everybody had pretty much collected their prizes and left. In fairness, uh, yeah, that's but, one out of three events. Yes. I go to the two Buffalo Billiards, I think. The charity auction is my favorite thing, and I'm disappointed. I understand that they can't do the Salt Lick anymore. That doesn't mean I'm not disappointed about it. And the billiard, Buffalo Billiards thing, um, I mean, on Sunday, you pretty much get to go there anyways, even if you don't have a pass. Mm. Yes, thank you, so The Grady. only thing I'd be missing out is Saturday. How much is it to buy just Saturday? Um, they don't have one for just Saturday. They have one for Saturday and Sunday for Buffalo Billiards, and that is $50. $50. 100 for the whole entire weekend, 70 for the charity gala. I can confirm, as per the email that I received, that there are those three events no longer Salt Lake, which makes me sad, but there's I'm sure there's a really good reason for it. Like, some sort well, of they, scheduling conflict? I don't know. It could be scheduling, and I think it also might be that it just kind of grew too big for Bridges. Salt Lake. I was going to say, you, you said you understood that they can't go to the Salt Lake, but I have no idea why they can't go to the Salt Lake anymore. <laughs> I think they said it in the past. I... I can't quite remember exactly why. I think it might have just gotten too big for it. So that's why I say I kind of understand. Um, that's kind of why they, I think they moved the charity gala to a different place too than the what it used to be, the Radisson. Mm, that'll be interesting. So I, I guess that makes sense. It's like more and more people are buying the weekend pass and then showing up at the Salt Lake. And maybe the last time they did the Salt Lake, it was, it was to capacity. So they're like, we can't keep doing this. We're just going to run out of room. Hmm. I don't wonder if it had anything to do with, like, how far it is to get... Because it's, like, an hour drive to get to the Salt Lake. Oh, wow. Uh, no, I don't think really. that really mattered to people. Yeah? <laughs> I guess it's hearts. an hour from downtown, but I, I, I thought it was more. It was closer to 45 minutes or so. All you do is you just drive past <laughs> southwest Austin and keep going for a little bit. Yeah, but those roads are always craptastic, and you're talking about I-35. Well, sort of I-35. It's it's more... Well, I was about to get into, like, technical talk, but it's past South Lamar. Like, there's a highway that you can branch off of I-35 on. I mean, you uh, basically have... When you're talking about north-south stuff, you have two options with Austin. You've got I-35 over you. You've got Southern Loop 1. Yes, but I'm not Uh, talking about Mopac or I-35. I'm talking about going east to west. Oh, okay. But uh, we, we digest... We do. Yeah, we're I thought that we were, we were going to talk a couple of minutes. We we're going to let you talk about Andromeda. I thought we so were too. Get the flip out of here. I was. I was going to, and then Alex wouldn't let me. <laughs> I said one thing, and then we you said totally one thing, and then another the one thing, which wasn't really a tangent because we were talking about it earlier. Andromeda. So, Alex, I got to listen to your thoughts on Andromeda. I enjoyed your your uh, video edit, by the way, of what was it, episode one hundred and three. What of the one that we were talking about, Andromeda, or the yeah, it's the one, one. It's the one. It's like Andromeda, the good, the bad, and the glitchy. Oh yeah, that's one hundred and four. One hundred and four. Okay, yeah. You were liking how I kind of was comparing the uh, different Mass Effects and even putting up kind of pictures showing the subtle differences. Sure, but I also just enjoyed your little uh, your little notes that you give now as the editor. You'll you'll say something in there, like put words on the uh-huh. screen. We have to read. Yeah. Put words, make me read. I mean, I, if, you're, if you're watching the video, you should be able to read it. No, it's true. I was reading it. I had time this uh, this morning in my office to read it. And anyway, so now I get to give my thoughts on Andromeda. I have not finished the game. I don't think you had when you did the review. So I think I that's yet. fair. Spoiler-free review, of course, as always. So I am probably a good 20-plus hours into it. Dang. I, I'd think, say I'm... I think I just established my... Fourth, 
third or fourth outpost at this point. I'm in the process of number four, so you're actually in, uh, ahead of me. It depends on whether you resolved the so-called resolved the conflicts between the two uh, rival factions or not. No, I've not done any. I, I've met the rival factions on the fourth planet. I have not. Okay, yeah, I them. just I just did that, and I just got the outpost done there with the toxic water not being toxic anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the, the water that burns you. Yeah, it's like you get in the water and boom, there goes the shields. And I came back there to finish up some quests because I finally figured out when you open the map, and this is for anyone wanting to play the game or currently playing the game, if you don't know this, when you open the map, there are hexes you can click on and then you can do fast travel to go next to the hex and that's how you go around the open world. You're not actually using open world, you're just trying to complete quests to get them out of your map. Wait, you didn't know that you could fast travel before? It doesn't tell you. <laughs> it does tell you. There is one point where they're like, they they come up uh, with the tutorial like, oh, uh, by the way, you can fast travel using the forward way stations. Yes, that's not a tutorial. It's the loading screen. Not the loading <laughs> screen. It came up with a little blip. It came up with a little blip on no, the side of I'm my screen. No, I'm not alone in this. There's a there's a guy in my Star Wars and D and D group. Who every weekend he asks me how I'm doing in Andromeda and he tells me how much farther ahead he is and he says that like he got so far into it before he realized you could go to forward stations. So I'm like, you can go to forward stations? I found that out on the first freaking world. Well, isn't that nice for you, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I came back to clear out some quests and I was like, is the car supposed to burn in the water? Because I hadn't driven in the water before and I thought it was interesting that it wasn't. So then I got in the water to go get one of the hidden caches, and all of a sudden I wasn't burning in the water. I was like, oh, I guess I fixed that problem. So my review <laughs> is, it still plays story-wise like a Bioware game should. However, I agree with some things that I've read online, you know, now that people have stopped freaking out about everything that they accepted as truth. Like, I'm not going to play it, the animations are bad, and as you said, Alex, I don't get that. I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> there there have been a few now. Like there's times where especially when I go talk to the uh the Sam unit in his uh main place and I'll talk to him and all of a sudden my character will like turn his neck super far, like almost 180 degrees, and I'm like, what is going on right now? But that's really the only animation glitch I've seen. <laughs> Excuse me while I kill myself. That, that <laughs> sometimes when I go to the bar, he raises his hand up like he's drinking, but there's no glass. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Speaking of glitches, so sometimes mm, I'll, be, air. I'll be running around, and I'll walk up to someone, and I'll start a conversation, but right as I walk up to them, Ryder will go... Yes, ever since we came to uh, Andromeda, we found the people are very... What are, who, who is he talking to? It's like a conversation <laughs> fragment that I that I experienced like two days ago. And and then like he goes to the to the, to the Nexus and he's like, uh, oh yes, th these people are, are strong-willed and it's amazing what they've accomplished. Who are you talking to? <laughs> Let me sing you the song of my native land. And he said it like three <laughs> times in like a span of five minutes. Or you he, go to talk to somebody, and it doesn't go into the into the like the conversation thing. It just sort of pans to show the both people talking, but then it'll pan to where you see like Ryder's hand and nothing else. Like you see like the <laughs> the bar, you see Ryder's hand, and you see off to like he's you're, he's kind of obscuring the person he's talking to. You're like, what are you doing, camera angle? <laughs> you you, you wanted to look ass. at Ryder's hand and nothing else, right? Look at his gesturing animations that we worked so hard on. I discovered something, too. I'd, I'd watched this whole long video complaining about Andromeda, and one of the things it was showing was they were in a conversation, and while they were in the conversation, uh, an indigenous monster had come up and was attacking them. And I thought that was kind of <laughs> weird. And then I was in a conversation, and all of a sudden I realized that an indigenous monster has run up and my companions are killing it. And I realized what happened was the way they made the game, you no longer create an instance separate from the game world while you're in a conversation. You're still in the active game world. So you're talking and all of a sudden an NPC on a, on a, on a patrol path runs into you. Yeah. No, I, 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 I've seen that actually when I reached the fourth world, the poison world, and I was talking to someone, this is the first time that ever happened to me. I, I like kept hearing this noise to the side of me and I'm like, What's going on? 
I look out of my peripheral vision, and one of the monsters was attacking one of my <laughs> one of my NPCs. While we're talking, the NPC's not doing anything. Finally, I get out of the talking, and just like one hit, my NPC kills it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. The companions um, are pretty powerful, but all the glitches aside, because they've already given us a patch to clean up some of the animations, and uh, I've had this conversation with Gina that I, I feel like people who complain about this kind of stuff thinks that once you make a video game, you go home. And I, mean, I guess some places do operate that way. I guess if you're like an indie game creator, you do a Kickstarter or whatever, and then you make the game, and then you ship it out, and you're done. But most of these people have clock in jobs so when the game ships out they've already been clocking in and doing things for months after the game was done so chances are that patch is currently being worked on so it's not like they're like done see you guys later <laughs> we're gonna we're, we're going to take a break for several months before we start working on the next one in all honesty, that's kind of a new thing, though, because you got to think games used to not have DLC or added things. It would just be... <laughs> they didn't have I, ongoing content release. Well, I give yeah. them credit that they've already patched some stuff, and I expect a lot of the rest of the stuff is going to get patched in order of priority. Some of the stuff mm -hmm. we said by the, like does not affect the gameplay at all, whereas some yeah. of the stuff really does. Like when NPCs won't load... And then all of a sudden you get stuck in the middle of a crowd of three NPCs and you can't get out, that kind of thing, or falling through the world. I minimized while oh, the world was world. loading and then I logged, uh, I came back to the game and I was falling through the world. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I think what, you know, the interesting thing that we're, we're seeing the shift in the industry, just to talk about that for a second, is that, you know, before it, it, it really was, they developed an entire game. They spent years, you know, months or years tweaking every part of it and at the end they released a finished product and it had to stand on its own without any patches or updates because there wasn't a way to get them out because you had sold a disc or you had sold a cartridge or mm -hmm. like an n64 so it had to be right the first time and now that the internet is ubiquitous and everything is connected to the internet and assumes every game that comes out assumes that you're connected to the internet. And if you're not connected to the internet, the game tends not to function right. You know, then now there's this expectation that they'll be able to fix anything, any pro big problems, you know, in post, you know, after the game's been released, which is just I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's good. It's just not how the industry used to work. It's the new. It's just it's the, the thing. New standard. Yeah, yeah. it gets us our games a little bit earlier, and they fix it after the fact. Right, and it allows us to keep enjoying the games longer than perhaps we used to be able to. Although some timeless classics people are still playing. Oh, definitely. And it also uh, gives them the option where it's like in the past they're like, well, we got to put all this into the game. Is now it's like. Well, we could cut this part out and have it for later, and yeah, maybe and sell take a little bit more money on it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, you know that part. Uh, you know the part of the game we're about to release where you have fun with your with all your uh, NPCs that you've traveled with for all this time, and you're gonna have a your party with them. Gear, we're gonna cut yeah. it out, and then we're gonna sell it to them. Yeah. That's that's the Mass pretty, Effect Three Citadel DLC. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> Dude, that's Mass Effect Three and game DLC. Yeah, there was the fact that they, they applied a patch, basically, deal, free DLC to fix the ending, but all of that aside, let's talk about the game itself. Alex makes all great points, and I wanted to add on to it. Okay. Uh, one thing is, I read a review that was saying that open world is not what Bioware is known for or good at, and okay. I really do agree with that. What happens is, each time you go to a new planet... You get a whole series of quests and a very large map to explore to do those quests and find new quests. And the whole time you're doing it, occasionally there'll be like this outpost where bad guys will get airlifted to it with inside of you. So you're like, oh, I got to go kill him. So you go and you kill yeah. him. And then later on, maybe you come back to the planet. They get airlifted there again. You kill him again. You get XP for it. Mm -hmm. It makes it feel like the world's alive, although it feels bottled a little bit. But open world uh, is not what you want with a Bioware game. The, the least fun part of first Mass Effect game was getting in the frickin' Mako, the worst vehicle ever made, with no, no actual boost, just a jump-off-the-ground boost, and traveling across a planet to pick up two artifacts and then kill bad guys. Oh, God, I remember that. That was so terrible. And, and so... 
it's essentially that souped up and made a little bit more fun with a better vehicle than the Mako. You do stuff with the planets to like make them change. I would have liked to have seen them like the visuals of the planet change a little bit more than what they have done once you work on the planet. You want to see more reaction to the things that you do. You want more effect. You want to feel more effective. Yes, because you're trying to make these planets livable, and then when you do, but you're they like, still look like sh- holes. <laughs> looks like the same old place that I helped try to fix. I mean, and I know it's supposed to take a long time, but it'd be interesting to see. It looked like a backwater piece of crap when I got here. I made it amazing, and now it looks like a backwater piece of crap. Yeah, the only you difference really is, like, the environments, there's usually something about the environment that, like, your life support gets worn down as you're there. Like, it's cold here, or there's radiation here, and it's more of a nuisance than anything. And you come back, and Sam's like, yeah, that problem's gone, and you're like, it doesn't look any different. Yeah, it looks the same. <laughs> Still covered in ice. Yeah. The open world thing, it's, you know, an upgraded Mako, for one thing, the vehicle. It has an actual NOS now. And then they make you have to use it all the time to get up hills and things. Nice. Yeah. Switch to six-wheel drive and four-wheel drive and the works. It, it feels like a chore, the open world. Does it feel like that to you, Alex? It's like, I gotta go do this quest. Now I gotta go do this quest. And and that's exactly what it's like to play an MMO. But it's it not... depends on the quest. It does, it does depend on the quest, but it's not what you play a Bioware game for. You play the Bioware game for the relationships and the stories... And then you have to take time out of that to go do quests. Granted, do you don't like have that. to, but leveling up is very beneficial. It does seem like more of a uh, kind of search for quests rather than follow the story. And also the open world is less, let's see what's here, and more, well, i got to go over here to do this quest. Okay, now I'm going to teleport over here and do this quest. It's less exploratory and more like you're just, you've got a shopping list. That aside, the story so far does seem very interesting, although I, I, I'm going to preface this by saying I do appreciate the, the risk they took by breaking away from the formula, because the way you make a good sequel is you figure out what the formula is. Yep. Same thing with Die Hard. <laughs> the bad Die Hard movies break from the, from the formula. Well, I mean, people don't like the second one. I'm okay with it. It's similar to the formula. But with the Mass Effect trilogy, the formula is Shepard's like, hey, dudes, here comes the Reapers. And they're like, no, they're not. (laughs) And then they don't work together until the end. Except the third one is the Reapers are here. So he's like, hey, guys, let's work together. And like, we don't want to until finally they work together. And we this don't want th- th- to survive this. They want to establish you know, some sort of new formula, and I, I appreciate the risk they're taking there, which is while there's still some unknown threat, it's not some guy going around the galaxy saying, mm-hmm. guys, guys, you got to listen to me. We're, ba- we're going to, we're going to, guys, instead it's, it's more you know, establishing a foothold into a new galaxy and being a pathfinder and finding worlds to settle on and things like that. So... I appreciate that, but something's lost when most of your time, most of the hours spent on the game, you know, you went to 30 to 40 hours, is spent. Okay, I gotta go back to EOS, because the radiation's gone. I gotta do this quest and this quest. Oh, this guy's missing. I gotta go do that. Okay, back to the story. I can't remember the last time I actually worked on the main story, because I'm working (laughs) on loyalty missions, and I've gotta go, and I've gotta set up this other outpost, and it it doesn't feel like a continuous story. Setting up the outposts, while they do a good job of it usually being priority ops, you've got to do this and this and this, still the steps you go through to set up the outpost is just another laundry list of things you've got to do. Alex, yes or no? Yes, sure. (laughs) (laughs) He is so committed to that answer. Right, but the storyline is still really cool. Is there a couple exclamation points there? Uh, Just one. uh, The really cool part? Uh, there's one exclamation point, as always. Um, the storyline is still really cool, fun to follow. You know, there's there's twists here and there. Overall, the protagonist is likable, although I do agree with the criticism that they maybe should take the story a little bit more seriously. I'm in for the ride. I want to see where it goes. But more than that, I want to see what the story arc is. Because they made Mass Effect and like, hey guys, people like this, we should make another one and hint at a third one. They all sort of follow the same formula and it worked. 
with this one, it's very much like what I'm expecting from the Star Wars movies, which is an arc already sort of planned. And I want to know where that's going. Would would I recommend it? Yes, I would recommend it. Alex, would you recommend it? I mean, yeah, I, I gave it two thumbsticks. I give it two thumbsticks up as well. It's not perfect, but no game is. No, and I mean, it still delivers to me the Mass Effect. I've been waiting for a new Mass Effect. It still feels like a Mass Effect, even with the differences. Definitely, it does still feel like a Mass Effect game. It still feels like a Bioware game. I thought it was interesting that you choose your responses to things based off of, am I emotional right now? Am I pragmatic? And it builds a personality profile rather than you have to be an all-out jerk or all-out great person to everyone or Tally dies. Paragon for life. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, it was a pure paragon. You know what I'm talking about, Alex? In the second game where you have to go all the way one direction or the other so that you can get tallied to end up on the Admiralty board so that in the next one you don't have to choose between her and and this other character? Um, I don't... Um, I don't even think Tali made it to the Admiralty board. In that case, then, either she died or Legion died in the third one. I don't remember either of them dying, though. Wow. I'm pretty sure I had uh, both of them. It's not so much that you get her onto the Admiralty board, it's just that uh, during Tally's loyalty mission, she's on trial, remember? And yeah. then you can, you can, they're like, hey, you have anything else you want to say? At which point it's like, okay, red option or blue option. And if it's all grayed out, then you're like, no, I'm not wasting my breath. <laughs> and you walk oh, off well, with Tally. Of course Tally. I gave the blue option. Yeah. If you had the blue option, then yeah, in the third I, I game, the she ends option. up on the Admiralty board. And if you have the red option, she ends up on the Admiralty board. But if you don't get those because you didn't go all the way one direction or the other, either all out jerk or goody two shoes, then, He's saying that if you ever picked one of the other color, like you, so there were a hundred times that you got to choose red or blue. For the and most part, ninety-nine yeah. times you chose blue, and one time you chose red, you didn't get the option. So then she doesn't end up an admiral in the third game. At which point she can't call off the fleet, and then you have to choose between her and the other awesome character. So well, they both lived, so I was okay. Okay, yeah, up. you were good. I had a I had a gray character, and I got punished for it. So. I had to choose Tally because I like Tally. So in this game, I do like that it's a personality profile. In fact, it was interesting. There was a pivotal scene where I didn't make any choices because it was going based off of my personality profile. Did that happen to you? It was like early know. on. Like you're you're about to land on a planet and all of a sudden you're not making choices anymore. It's choosing for you. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. This is what my character would say. So, yes, I agree, Tristan, we are going long. I just wanted to talk about it. It still feels like a Bioware game. Alex agrees with me. Two thumbs six up. I brought up Star Wars, though. Who got to see the teaser? The teaser for The Last Jedi? Yes. <laughs> that is like a whole other topic. No, no, it was a teaser. About. We're going to give a teaser. I saw it. Luke dies. Tristan saw it. Alex, you know of it. Han Solo you... dies again. I believe I saw it. <laughs> you saw it. That's um, the one where, like, part of it was you see your hand on the ground and the, the rock starting to float and you yes. hear Luke talking. Okay, and Luke's so, yeah, talking. And then Luke says it's something about, like, it's time for the Jedi to die. To, uh, to, uh, to end. Yeah, for yeah. the Jedi to end. And I have some theories about that, but I, I think we should use that teaser as a way for us to tease to our uh, Star Wars thoughts for a future episode. Okay. Star Wars thoughts. You want to talk about the Grey Jedi? Nailed it. Uh, no, no, that was Mass Effect. <laughs> you're, 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 get, you're getting no, you're getting confused, Tristan. <laughs> no, it was when Boba Fett was on on the Enterprise. Right, I forgot he shot Kirk, and he said, "Call right. me Boba Fett." <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> All right, let's get the flip out. We need to get the flip. Let's out get the of flip out of here. This one's Joseph's fault. What? We didn't go <laughs> Good long. Night, everyone. Goodbye. Good night, Caboose. I'm going to protect Andromeda. Andromeda. 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 I'm going to protect Andromeda. Andromeda